Hi, I'm Antonio Sella. In this video, we are going to discuss the relationship between H infinity norm and robust performance, because this justifies that H infinity control will be the underlying tool to achieve consistent performance in the face of modeling errors. We already know from previous materials the importance of the small gain theorem, but that guarantees robust stability just stability in the face of modeling errors, so signals below infinity, but not robust performance, signals below a given finite size. So in this video, we'll refine the ideas in this small gain theorem to derive small gain conditions for robust performance. So let us consider this block diagram. Maybe this generalized plant P is in closed loop, so we have some control loops inside, etc. So we will understand B to be exogenous inputs, set points, disturbances, and the like, and we will understand D to be a set of output signals that must be small in our particular problem, usually loop errors and maybe limitations to manipulated variables for saturation or robustness, as we'll discuss. Then we have some uncertainty in our control loop, which we have extracted like this for our formal analysis. Then robust stability would mean guaranteeing that the norm of D is not infinite, so that D is just bounded when B is bounded. But if the norm of D is not infinite, but it is 10 trillions, then maybe that does not mean that our loop is performing well. So with suitable scalings, we will assume that the worst case norm of P is 1, the maximum size, and our goal is proving that the size of D is less than 1. With suitable weights inside here, we are not losing, of course, any generality because such weights or scalings from normalized unit norm signals to actual physical units are assumed to be inside P. In the same way, the uncertainty delta will be assumed to have a size of 1, a worst case gain of 1. Okay, if it's linear, it will be the infinite norm peak of frequency response, but okay, if it's non-linear, it, it will be just a worst case gain. So nevertheless, we will assume that its gain is bounded by one, because if it's bounded by two, we got just, let's say, multiply signal A by two before entering physical models of my control system. Okay, so there is no loss of generality then in assuming that delta has size 1, so signals A and C are suitable scaled, and in the same way B has size 1, and D must be below 1 with suitable scalings inside this generalized plant B. Good. So, what I have encircled now in blue is sort of the problem statement, and the thing I highlighted in red is a thing we must prove, okay? Then the missing link is this condition. If the gain of P, worst case gain, is bounded by one, then the blue and pink things imply the red one, and that's the main result of this video. Let's prove that. What does this condition, the gain of p less than 1, mean? Well, it means that the norm of vector cd of the output is less than the norm of the input vector ap in here. But, okay, the norm of vector cd is the square root of c transpose c plus d transpose d, actually the square root of the integral of it. So squaring this inequality, we get 
that the left hand side is this thing and the right hand side is that thing. So the norm of c squared plus norm of d squared is lower or equal than norm of a squared plus norm of b squared. Then this condition also means that the norm of a is smaller than the norm of c, the Euclidean norm. And of course we can square that and have this inequality. Now, if we move c to the left hand side, we have this expression. And from this one here, if we move c to the right hand side, we can write this expression, which is a bound for the size of d. Exactly what we are looking for. Because now we can see that norm of a squared minus norm of c squared is what we have there. And this is a negative number. So the norm of b plus the negative number is of course smaller than the norm of b alone. So we have the result. The worst case gain between B and D in closed loop with this delta is less than 1. And this is what we wanted to prove. Because this is the linear fractional transformation interconnection between delta and B subject to input B. And the worst case gain of that thing is less than 1. So if the maximum size of p is 1, by definition, by our scalings in our problem, then, of course, the maximum size of d will be less than 1, which means that our performance goal will be achieved. In summary, if given our scalings of uncertainty and performance measures, we check that the infinity norm of P, which is the only thing we can check because delta is unknown. If we can prove that the infinity norm of P, worst case gain, is less than 1, then the size of D will be less than 1 for all admissible uncertainties. So this is the robust performance result. The worst case gain of the LFT interconnection will be less than 1 for all delta such that its worst case gain is less than 1. Let us now see how this important result generalizes previous ideas, because okay, if we understand P as a known linear plant in linear robust control, then forgetting about B, setting it to 0, we would need the small gain condition to prove stability of this closed loop. So, if instead of saying that the whole four block system P must have gain less than one, we only require that the one one block is less than one, then we get an easier condition which proves robust stability. It's easier to accomplish because it's easier for just one of the four elements to be less than one than for the singular values and matrix stuff of the four elements to be less than one. So robust stability is a necessary condition for robust performance. Also, if delta were zero, then we would not have this A input. So when there is no uncertainty, the relationship between B and D is just P to two. So requiring this to be less than 1 amounts to say that we need performance with delta equals 0, so nominal performance, and of course nominal performance is a necessary condition for robust performance. So at the end, this condition is more stringent than having both robust, robust stability and nominal performance. If this holds, 
then we have robust stability nominal performance because they refer to the diagonal elements of this matrix. But the converse, of course, is not true. And we need extra conditions on the interaction between the 1, 1 and 2, 2 elements and the hopefully small size of the off diagonal elements to prove robust performance, which is more difficult to prove than a separate independent analysis of the meaning of each of the diagonal elements. So this is it. In this video, we did show the key result in proving that the norm of C is below a given desired value, one without those of generality. In the face of uncertainty, the robust performance condition, and we saw that it is more stringent than having robust stability and nominal performance, which are necessary conditions for robust performance, but not sufficient ones. So we end up the video here. Thanks for watching.